is Rafi Guzon, and you are tuned in to Nothing But That Sports Talk. Cry, Eagles cry. Cry, Eagles cry. Get rid of that, all that junk in the background. Cry, Eagles <laughs> cry. Hit them low, hit them high. I mean, at I least the Eagles, Eagles made the playoffs the as the Giants the did it. <laughs> <laughs> Calm Just down. Said. Calm down. <laughs> Calm down. What happened to the Eagles? What happened? Uh, I mean, obviously they collapsed. By the way, this is Rafi from Nothing But That Sports Talk. I will think it was on, alongside Jeb Wilcast. I mean, sorry, I had to introduce myself to you. I didn't mean to. All good. Hi, everybody. I mean, but um, yeah. what do you have to say for your Eagles? You this know what? I, I <laughs> cut it to my credit. I said it the entire season. This was not the Super Bowl team from last year. Uh, I said it on day one. I saw it. Uh, they barely, I, everyone had faith, you know what I mean? Uh, and uh, they had, they had some good times. They had some, some good games, but for the most part, uh, they, they squeaked by a lot, uh, especially that Kansas city game, the bills game, you know, won a lot of games in overtime and uh, yeah, they had a 10 and one record at one point and were the, you know, top, top seed in the NFL, but they were barely there. Uh, you know, like I said, that week 11 to week 15 was really going to be the test. I think they won two or three games out of that one and then just completely collapsed after that. Uh, and we're all not quite sure why. <laughs> I mean, could it be Jalen Hurts? You, you, know, had one the, you had one touchdown in the second quarter and you couldn't capitalize on a two-point conversion. I mean, the Cowboys lost too, but at least they managed to put up more points. The Eagles, that is true. Oh, I yeah. mean, I know my Giants were in the playoffs, but at least he made sure you didn't win a division because you would have had an easier run to the Super Bowl than just go to start off the see the playoff run at Tampa Bay. Right. Absolutely. No, and I, I said that too. I was like, who knew? You know, I said that on, on Blonde Blitz. I said, who who would have thought? I watched what you said. I watched what you said on Blonde Blitz. I watched the podcast. I watched Thank it. You. Thank you. <laughs> congratulations. Congratulations on giving some of your intake. I mean, I didn't listen to the whole thing, Thank but you. I listened to the bits that was important, including the slander that Nikki descended upon Cowboy fans. But we'll get back to <laughs> she was, she was we'll, legit. We'll get, she was legit. we'll get to your Cowboys in a minute, but the, 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 you got to take the slander because because he went from very losing to the to the Chiefs in the Super Bowl last year to that egregious performance against the Tampa Buccaneers. Like, seriously. Yeah. What, 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 yeah. But, Absolutely. And I mean, I think obviously changes need to be made. One of your made. worst playoff losses you just witnessed for the Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah. No, it's, it's, fans are confused. We're not quite sure exactly what happened. Uh, like I said, is, is it Jalen Hurts? Is he not as good of a quarterback as everyone's saying? Is, is he not going to be there next season? Uh, I mean, Nick Sirianni uh, rumors his, you know, his job is safe. Uh, you know, Brian Johnston, just just interviewed with the Atlanta Falcons for head coach positions. He's out there, you know, uh, so Brian Johnson might be leaving. I, I think he needs to, um, as well as, as the DC, you know, Matt Patricia, like he's, <laughs> so I think, you know, I just think the play calling wasn't great this season. Uh, I think a lot of the teams had the Eagles number and uh, something's just, something just isn't clicking in that locker room. Unfortunately, I'm not in the locker room, so I don't know. <laughs> and whoever know. is, is in in, yeah, you know? I know. you're in Los Angeles. You're at the Emmy Awards, and uh, yeah, you yeah. can add another Emmy to. Oh, I was already to the one that's already behind you. You couldn't add another Emmy. I mean, seriously. I needed for a prime time, but I still get to attend because I'm a member of the Academy, so it's always a fun time to cheer on my colleagues in in the business uh really fun time but of course i was rocking <laughs> my eagles jersey i was watching the game during the eagles too game. yeah can you repeat what you said because it kind of la- it was kind of lagging oh uh i said uh i you know I, I made sure to rock the eagles jersey on the red carpet and then i also was watching the eagles game as uh as the emmys were going on so you know my friends kind of took a picture of me. There's my phone. I'm watching the game. The Emmys are in front of me and the ceremony is going on and I'm sitting there watching the Eagles game. I have to say though, I did turn it off after the safety. I was like, and I'm done. I'm just going to watch the Eagles or I'm just going to watch the Emmys now. So I don't so, blame yeah. you. I don't blame you for that. I watched the World Rumble when I, I watched the World Rumble at the, at the Grammy Awards viewing party for 2008, in 2018, like over 
six years ago, I believe. Yeah, six years yeah. ago. I don't blame you for going hard for the Eagles, even when you're you're at a at a major event that that you're personally invited to that was literally mandatory to go to. I don't blame you. Yeah, what are you gonna do? You know, there were other people there watching it too, and we were we were in line having you know to grab a cocktail and grab some food, and people were talking about the game. So it wasn't just me. <laughs> but anyways, in all seriousness, no, like um, how like how like how different was attended this year's Emmys compared to a recent Emmys we have in the past? Uh, I mean, uh, this was one of my favorite ceremonies. Uh, I've been to the primetime Emmys now for about 10 years, and it's always a really good time. Uh, I unfortunately wasn't on the red carpet as long as I usually am. Um, you know, I was a little late getting to the show, but was able to at least, you know, snap a few pictures. But I thought the show was really well per- you know, put together. Uh, well, actually, one of my good friends from high school was one of the writers on the show. <laughs> so congratulations to her, Laura, Laura Guten. Uh, and then I think they just showcased a bunch of shows that, you know, all of us kind of grew up with. So that was fun to see all of the old cast members of, of TV history come together and do, you know, little segments from Grey's Anatomy to, you know, the Jeffersons to, uh, you know, Calista Flockhart. And it was, it was just, it was a really good time. Yeah, I know it was a good time. It's also a good time watching the Black Cat run around that franchise of the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> run around that franchise. And I'm literally seeing the Black Cat behind you. This is all of everybody. She always makes an, she makes an appearance on every podcast. So here, let me, here, say hi, Olive. She's my good luck kitty. She's a sweetheart. So we'll put her down. <laughs> Go ahead. Black Cat run around that franchise. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, wasn't there a black cat on the field at some point in some game in NFL, like two or three years ago? They were, they yeah, called it. yeah, there was. That's what that's what inspired the black cat running around that franchise. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, there was. It was when the when the Cowboys spoke the New York Giants in the regular season game, like like I believe it was two thousand eighteen or nineteen or somewhere around those. Eighteen or nineteen, yeah. That's I was. I remember. I remember. I was in Atlanta Giants, watching the game, and the Giants got smoked that day. But we weren't expected to be anything that year, so it's fine. Right. I mean, I didn't have any expectations towards him winning anything, even as a lower seed. Like I, like I witnessed when I was in high school. So I knew Daniel Jones wasn't going to be ready for a postseason appearance just yet. No, no, not yet. Well, I mean, and Daniel Jones still. I mean, I mean, he didn't play half the season, but uh, Tommy Tommy Cutlet's got in there, you know. But when you, but when you watch, also the- Taylor. I mean, Taylor did a good job, though. Tyra Taylor did a good job, so. Yeah, yeah, he really did. But anyways, getting back, getting back to being on topic, like when, when you saw like all the not, when you saw like all the awards being handed out to all the actors that were were put together some of the of the greatest best shows that came out like recently, which award winner stood out to you the most? Um, I mean, there's God, there's there's so there's so much talent in general. Um, I do you watch The Bear? The woman who won supporting actress in a comedy series, I loved her. I actually talked to her for a second. Uh, I was like, "Congratulations, love your show," and she was like, "Thank you." She was walking around with a little Emmy. It was super cute. Uh, I think she, you know, I like her. Like I said, I, I I follow the show, so I tend to like people who, you know, when they win, I actually like know who they are because I watch the shows. Um, yeah, I mean, I think she was of my favorites. I can't remember who else won. Um, to be honest, the what stuck out in my head the most was Joan Collins walked by me in the hallway, and uh, she presented an award, and uh, that was very iconic for me because you know it's Joan Collins. So <laughs> you know she was just you know her security and whatnot was walking by, and and she was just uh, you know she just the energy around her was just like Hollywood royalty, which she is. So that that's the moment actually that stood out for me the most at the Emmys uh, was was getting to see her. Yeah, I mean, when you're, involved, when you're around the entertainment environment for so long and seeing all the TV production of all the best shows that you see throughout the years, you're bound to run into some of your favorites eventually and witness the awards being- Absolutely. It's many different award shows. Yeah. And it is good that, you, that from one Emmy award winner to another, we get to witness other Emmys like get a taste of what you experienced when you was winning throughout your time. And I remember you first came on the show in all seriousness. You talked about your experience. You talked about working your way towards or earn those Emmys as a behind the scenes worker. Right, correct. Mm-hmm. Like, 
like even and even now transition to being a sports journalist and it, mm -hmm. like, you 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 like you're sharing your you're you're sharing and and on to your wisdom of everything you're doing in this industry right and i think you know and it was it was a little bit more of a challenging transition than i thought it would be um you know and obviously still working towards it every day uh but I'm excited for Super Bowl. Uh, I've just got media credentials. I'll be at, at Media Row for the entire week, uh, credentialed through the Los Angeles Football Network. So that's going to be a lot of fun. I actually have a table there. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm excited to see who we all interview. So it should be a good good time. It's going to be in Vegas? I am. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, I mean, it's, you know, I, I specialize in interviewing and that's what I love to do. And when I'm a field, a field, as a field producer behind the scenes, uh, that's kind of what I specialize in is, is talking to people and interviewing. So it wasn't that much of a transition to going from behind the camera interviewing to in front of the camera interviewing uh, a little bit different, but for the most part, it's, it's very similar. Uh, and it's funny because everyone's like, Oh, you're at the Emmys and you're seeing all these celebrities. I, I don't get excited with celebrities, uh, maybe, but I, I really get excited when I meet athletes and want to talk with them and, and want to know more. Uh, actors and actresses to me are just kind of, I guess I grew up on a stage, so I'm not all that impressed with them. <laughs> I enjoy their work, but I'm not, you know, you know, but you get, at least you know, acknowledge that celebrity, at least you acknowledge that celebrities are human beings just like me and you. Oh, absolutely. No, no. and they, I mean, no matter how, how yeah, many people absolutely. watch your stuff or, or how many, much, much money you're making after all the creativity you're putting into it, we're all human beings in the world population trying to just try and do something. Like, absolutely. I, I no, and they do. I mean, it is, it's an art, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's acting is an art, absolutely. But I, I prefer to talk about, you know, all the passion in football and sports and, you know, working your way. You know, because that just involves every bit of your body. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that, that that's what impresses me. Yeah, exactly. Not to mention all the, all the, the transportation, the stamina that you have to, you have to, you, the body has used when doing all these interviews. And this is called, cool. I'm actually speaking as somebody that covered a draft and a major professional championship game or series in 2023. I mean, I, I mean, if, I don't know if you've been following my content, but I, w I was at the WNBA draft last year. The, when mm -hmm. Aliyah Boston was drafted number one, I got to. Yep. I mean, all I've done was just the, just the, the press conference interviews, and of course, I got I saw mm -hmm. Mila Mustafa from BET was there. There, I mean, if mm -hmm. you're not familiar with her, go to MTV Fresh Out Friday and check out her work. You're gonna love it. But mm -hmm. and, um, later on in the year, I got a chance to cover Game Three for the WNBA draft. It's NBA NBA right. Finals between the Liberty and the Aces. So right. That has to be the same equipment as you go all the way to Vegas and then all the way to other states to cover the Super Bowl. Absolutely. That has to be. Yeah. I mean, and Vegas yeah. isn't too far away from me, but you know, I've I've been to Tampa. I went to Tampa. I went to Miami. Uh, I was in Minnesota. Inside, have you been like inside the games, interviewing players post game? Like the uh, not inside. I mean, I I have the media credentials, but I'm I'm usually at Media Row. Um, and there's other events too that a bunch of players show up to, and I interview them there. But I, I haven't actually interviewed anybody at the actual Super Bowl yet. That's coming. <laughs> okay, but but that's yeah. that's gonna come like this year, right? Or uh, I mean, we'll see. Hopefully, I mean, I have I have week of credentials, so and I actually have like a table at um. At Pro, like I said, with Los Angeles Football Network, so that'll be it'll be fun to that's see who all comes that's, through Radio Row. That's big time, and you know what? I can't wait for you to come back on the show so you share your experience with this one too. Hopefully, it's not the yeah. experience you had last year. I mean, I've actually been able to, I've actually been able to interview players at the press conference and a shoot around during the finals last year. If it, and that's mm -hmm. year, and then yeah. Kelsey Club called me out for keeping a damn Liberty cap in my in my freaking in some, somewhere in my room. Kelsey right. Plunch the guard for the Las Vegas Aces called me out for keeping the Liberty cap in, cap in my house. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, and I mean, I'll be at Media Day. Like, you get to interview all the players for Media Day, and then also I'll there's... Media Day for the biggest, biggest meet. I, I was at Media Day for the biggest conference four days after that. So I, I, I finally have some experience doing a Media Day and a major professional championship game in a conference championship to tournament on the way towards the championship round watching, the, watching VCU celebrate Win a net, win a conference championship and clinch another berth at March Madness. So, between my that has to follow the same equivalency of what you're doing covering the Super Bowl 
outside just the game itself. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, and like I said, I'll be at Media Day. I'll also be at all the press conferences that the you know players do at their hotels. Uh, they usually usually a media availability is about two or three hours every day, depending on what team. Like they kind of spread it out throughout the week. Uh, we don't have that schedule yet, though, so <laughs> I'm still waiting to see what I'm doing when. But that should be coming shortly. Well, it'll be coming shortly. Yeah. Now we get back to some, now uh, on the way now. One team that we know very well will not reach the Super Bowl, despite the fact that they're a number two seed. And it's a series, it's a, it's a, the disappointment of the Dallas Cowboys continues when they got well run by the Green Bay Packers, as I mentioned earlier in the show. Yeah, yeah. In the last episode where Ryan came on, yeah, that, that was just literally disappointing. What, do you, what are your overall thoughts when you witnessed the Dallas Cowboys lose again? I mean, I was, yeah. I was shocked, but I wasn't. To be honest, for some reason, Dak always seems to choke in the playoffs, and Dallas always seems to choke. I mean, they haven't been in a Super Bowl since, what, 1996? So I wasn't shocked when it happened. 5-13 in the postseason ever since 1996. Does that ring a bell? Right. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) But, I mean, I I expected more from them. Um, I I did have them to win. And I thought I didn't think Green Bay could do it, and I couldn't didn't think they could do the upset. Obviously, they did. And uh, I mean, I'm happy for Jordan Love. Don't get me wrong. I think uh, I would love to see them. I would love to see them move forward. Um, they, they're playing the 49ers this week, which I think, or this weekend. I think the 49ers are a really, really balanced team. I in the beginning of the season, I said that the 49ers weren't going to lose any games. <laughs> they obviously did. But I mean, be, between I mean, dear Lord. Purdy, you know, Brennan uh, Brennan Ayuk, uh, God, I keep going, Christian McCaffrey, Kittle. I mean, they're they're really balanced on both sides of the ball. So I don't see Packers going forward, Um, even though they beat Dallas. I don't see them going, you know, winning the divisional here. Uh, You know, San Fran is nine and a half as a favorite. So I'm I'm saying uh, San Fran's going to beat Green Bay 32-27 right now. Yeah, that's a pretty interesting point. And you know what? I, I could pick the Green Bay Packers because the ups, because upsets are very tempting to the NFL. It happens, well, it doesn't happen too often, but it does happen. So I do think though, ugh, and I I I, st- I still think that the Ravens are gonna beat the Texans, but I'm not gonna be mad if the Texans upset the Ravens. I have Ravens to win the Super Bowl in my bracket. I have the Ravens on I one bracket, one. I have the Listen, Bills on the other. I picked the team. Listen. In my in my 2024 prediction show I did with Ryan earlier this month, I picked the Super Bowl matchup between the Ravens and the 49ers. You know, Absolutely. the 49ers could avenge that loss to the Ravens back in the back in New Orleans where they had that little black temporary blackout, which led the comeback, the failed comeback attempt by yep. the 49ers at the Superdome. You remember that Super Bowl? I want that rematch to happen in Vegas. Yeah, absolutely. No, and I I and I think it will. I think it will be. San Francisco versus the Ravens. Uh, they're the the best two teams in the league, let's be honest. Uh, but like I said, I love CJ Stroud. I think it's amazing what he's done with, you know, for the Texans this season. I called it in the combine. I saw him. I was like, right. he's going to be something special. You, you did, yeah, you did predict the Texans to beat the Browns. Mm-hmm. But I think the Browns are going to sting up the joint this much. But then again, what do you expect? I mean... I, I was ex- I was mad that Joe Flacco, or I was a not just just disappointed. I wasn't mad, <laughs> but I was disappointed that Joe Flacco didn't do better. Uh, I was excited to see his comeback, but he tried. <laughs> but yeah, this uh, this this Texans Ravens game is going to be pretty good. So we'll see. Yeah, uh, I'm not too high on the Texans being the Ravens. I'm sorry, CJ Stroud yeah. got a good run, but it goes it goes downhill from here. It's well, tough. I think I think he has, you know, and I think he has rookie down in Baltimore, Maryland. Yeah, I think he has rookie of the year locked up for NFL in general. Uh, I think it'll be between him and Puka Nakua from the Rams. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't see him. I don't see the team beating Lamar Jackson and and the the Ravens are on fire. So, <laughs> but I'll tell you that they may not win, but I'll tell you this: I'm gonna tell you this straight up. C.G. Stroud, Jordan Love, these kids are coming up. Yep. These kids are going to be a problem to the NFL for many years to come. Yep. When you, when you, if you're going to pull off playoff victories like this. Yep. And you love to see it. You know, Jordan Love was behind Aaron Rodgers for three years in Green Bay. Now, the same way Aaron Rodgers was behind Brett Favre. Brett Favre, exactly. It's all about picking up from where the last best quarterback left off 
for your yeah. franchise. Yeah, and it's I didn't think Green Bay was going to be in the playoffs Houston, either. Texas franchise back to life. Yeah. Literally. Absolutely. Yeah, literally, I mean, they were so bad last year. You were just like, oh, they, it was like it, Texans were like the Panthers this year. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, oh, that's and then to pick up CJ Stroud second, didn't even go first. Bryce Young went first, went to the Panthers, was horrible. And then CJ Stroud just, you know, throwing it out. I guess baseball, throwing it out of the park, hitting it out of the park. <laughs> but, um, so, yeah, I'm excited for CJ, but uh, we'll we'll see what happens. Uh see what happens it's they're playing saturday yeah they're playing saturday yep they're playing saturday indeed oh yeah now we get to the next matchup the detroit lions and the tanny buccaneers that was a good win for the detroit lions against los angeles Rams. what do you over absolutely i was actually on the plane and i couldn't get service so i was watching the score what plane were you using what plane, what plane were you using i was uh i was on it was I was on Southwest, but it was more so my phone Jet, was dying. So you should have picked Jet Blue. They got a TV. At least you would have been. Yeah. But whatever. Fine. But yeah, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't realize my charger wasn't charged, so I couldn't. The woman next to me let me charge. Let me charge. Use her charger for a bit, just so you I could. Play you, know what? you want back to the game when you saw the highlights? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, no, I was. It was a. It was a great game. Um. You know, Baker Mayfield and Mike Evans, they're on fire right now. They're, you know, they're firing at all cylinders. Uh, and they're all, you know, Lions are also playing well. I'm sorry. And uh, Buccaneers are also playing well on defense. Um, just in general, I have some numbers. The Bucks are only allowing 15 points per game, which is number two in the NFL. Uh, they're also number two in the league, allowing only 86.7 rushing yards per game. Um, but, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. The Lions... Uh, We'll see. We'll see what happens. But yeah, I mean, this is the best time for the Detroit. I mean, well, before we get to my predictions for the Detroit Lions, like, what would this playoff win do for the Detroit Lions franchise going forward? Especially since they're they're one of the teams always playing on Thanksgiving Day almost every year. I know Thanksgiving Day passed, but since we always see on Thanksgiving every year, like, what would this do for the engagement of the Detroit Lions franchise going forward? Not that they're in a playoff game for the first time in thirty-one years. Exactly. Yeah. It's been 30, 30 something years. Um, Dan Campbell's obviously done a great job. I mean, I think it'll do a lot for the Lions, you know, the Lions franchise. Uh, I love golf there. I was bummed when golf left the Rams. <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's great. I, I'm, I'm really, really, really excited for all of my Lions fans. Uh, you know, the Lions, they have one of the best defenses in the NFL. Um, they've got top three, numbers rushing yards allowed at 88.8 per game uh and yards per carry as well at 3.7 so they um yeah lions lions might take it i i i was saying san francisco ravens lions bills those are my four that i'm i'm debating for super bowl yeah. also aiden hutchinson let's talk about him too <laughs> I mean, Aiden Hudson's doing amazing this season. He's racked up 11.5 sacks in the regular season. Um, he's, you know, the most by any member of the Lions since I think it's like 2017. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I think I think Goff and the offense will pull it off. I think they'll beat the Buccaneers. Uh, what do I have here? I have Lions 24, Buccaneers 18 is what I have. Okay, you picked the Detroit Lions to beat the Buccaneers. I'm going to pick the Detroit Lions yeah. to beat the Buccaneers as well. I mean, they could maybe yep. have a decent run, but it's time for it to end down in the Motor City because you took. Yeah. Jared Goff, I like Mayfield. I like Baker Mayfield in Tampa too. I think they're the, they were the best team, you know, in the South, and uh, I like him there. A lot of people are like, eh, he, I, I'm not sure if he's a free agent next season. I think he is, but um, yeah, I, I I'm excited to see him. I hope he stays. So I think they'll I think they'll yeah. even build on this season. Yeah, let's see what happens. But yeah. Kudos to the Detroit Lions for actually making it because um yeah. I don't know if you the thought line, the Lions I don't know if you follow basketball, but they're the best thing going down in Detroit sports right now because of, because the Pistons are a complete mess. Right. What else? Now on to the game that we all get excited about every time. The yes. Bucks, the Bucks, the Kansas <laughs> Let's bring out the beer and the popcorn for this one. <laughs> this time it's not gonna be an arrowhead where it's cold. It's going to be in Western New York where there's inches of snow. Yep. You guys still- got snow today, too. My 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 friend was texting me. He was te- texting me pictures of the snow. 
<laughs> I was like, uh, um, yeah, I mean, the Bills are on fire. Let's be honest. Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, they're in the zone. Um, the starting the season off 5-5, five five, they really picked up the slack going 7-1 to one with a playoff win over the, Detroit, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and I, I, like I said, I had the Bills from preseason to be in the Super Bowl, to, to win the Super Bowl. And, uh, you know, during the middle of the season, they were just not doing as well. It just was not the Bills team. The wheels had started to kind of fall off and they came back. I think Josh Allen, you know, he, when he gets back to basics and kind of gets out of his head and uses his feet, he's amazing. Um, also, he can throw. But I think they're they're just back. I mean, also, in, in addition to Stefan Diggs, I mean, Dalton Kincaid is doing great. He's another weapon around him. Um, he's got 73 receptions for 673 yards and two touchdowns this season. Um, yeah, but also, too, Kansas City pay, played a great wild card game against the Dolphins. So you, you never can, you never can, you know, don't, Mahomes, you can just never say he's not going to play well. You know what I mean? Like, never put him behind the eight ball, I feel like. And same thing with the Andy Reid factor. You just never know. You know what I mean? Like, he'll, he, you know, he's two minutes left, that hurry up offense, he plays it and he, he wins. So I don't know. I, I personally think the holes at wide receiver with Kansas City are going to hurt them in this game. Um, although rookie Rashid Rice, he stepped up a lot last game. Um, and I love me some Isaiah, Isaiah Pacheco, too. I think he's amazing. But, uh, yeah, I think the holes at wide receiver are really going to hurt them. And I, I think the Bills have this one. I'm, they're favored by two and a half. And I'm going to go Bills 31 KC 28. So it's going to be a really tight game. I think it's going to come down to the wire for sure. It's going to be a tight game, but I got Buffalo winning this game. I mean, sorry. Yeah. I got to move. I got to go hard for New York. I mean, I'm a Giants yeah. fan. Giants first. New York always. I'm yep. always going to be a Giants fan. I'll root for the Jets. But, but when the Jets and Giants are out, that's the only time the Buffalo Bills will get my support. So please get it done, Buffalo. I think they got it. I'll be excited to see uh, the Bills fans too. They deserve it. Did you, guys, did you see how many Bills fans came out to sn to shovel the snow? Like Bills Mafia yeah. is legit. <laughs> like there was lines of people what, like wanting to shovel snow from the stadium. I thought it was great. Yeah, I saw the videos. Yeah, people are going to clean up house yeah. in, up, up in Western New York. Yep. It is snowing in it the upper apparatus snowing. up there. Yes. If you've been there, you understand. Yeah, I've been there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that that one for this episode. Nothing but that sports talk. Thank you for stopping by, Deb Webcast for with cast for Anytime. sharing your wisdom about the Emmys and give your NFL picks. Yep. I mean, yeah. For Deb Webcast, I think Blue was on recording live from New York in Los Angeles. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Another episode of Nothing But That Sports Talk. Have a good night. Have fun.